After months of heat waves, severe weather, and a devastating hurricane, things are about to change big time as we head deeper into October. A giant cold mass of air is forming in Canada, and it's about to blast its way down into the US. When this happens, the clash of cool, dry air and warm, moist air in the middle of the country will likely cause several problems in the form of big storms and potentially some very early snow. Also, there's some new developments in the tropics where tropical storm Julia has formed. We're gonna get super in depth on those things right here in a second. But first, the last time I made a video, Hurricane Ian was about to make its second landfall in the US. Now the storm is gone, but the damage left behind is even more heartbreaking than what we originally thought it was going to be. Here's some of the latest info on the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. Over 2 million people lost power in Florida, but thankfully massive convoys of linemen from all around have been working nonstop to reduce that number to 100,000. At least 105 people have died due to Hurricane Ian, and lots more are still missing. Nearly 4,000 people needed to be rescued, and over 200,000 families have registered for government assistance. Storm Chasers Brandon Kopic, Chris Hall, and Vince Welty are still down there in Florida, helping people on behalf of the Y'all Squad. We've been tarping people's roofs, buying gas and supplies for people, getting U-Hauls full of generators, air conditioners, and fans, and handing them out directly to the people who need them most. We're also just straight up buying cars for people who had theirs washed away. Thanks to the Y'all Squad, I present you a keys of a 2018 Ford Fiesta. Boy, Mikey. Oh my God, you're kidding. Oh my God, I got a car. I've been walking, it's four miles from my front door to where I work. I got a car. Oh my God, I got a car. Man, you guys are I mean, how cool is that? How cool is what we're doing here? I'm, I'm so happy that we're able to do this. I'm gonna have a full awesome video of the entire mission out here soon. But first, winter is coming. It's gonna be cold for millions of people from the upper Midwest down into the Ohio Valley as the first of many cold blasts is currently moving in. It was definitely colder than usual this morning in Kentucky, but I still braved the elements and drove my golf cart to work in shorts and Crocs. Tonight, frost and freeze warning are in effect across a good chunk of the country as some more substantial air will be settling in. But if you think this is going to be cold, we're just getting started. Temperatures are going to start creeping up for everyone early next week as a big ridge tries to propagate mostly zonal flow over the continental U.S. But our next big bowling ball of a system will crash into view around Wednesday as a huge cold front bottoms out thermometers across the majority of the eastern half of the country. This cold air will linger around for a while and likely bring the first frosts and freezes to many if you didn't see one tonight or if you're not going to see one in the morning tomorrow. But Hottober is the new October out west, with summer-like temperatures sticking around across much of the entire western half of the U.S. We're talking about near record high temperatures across the Pacific Northwest, but for the most part, everyone is staying drier than usual. Well, everyone except for the southern extent of the western U.S. A lingering upper-level low has been drifting all over the southwest, bringing moisture in that's going to lead to more isolated flash flooding, and just on and off heavy rain across much of Arizona and New Mexico through Sunday. And temperatures are actually going to be below normal in this region through early next week. So we've got mostly hot weather in the west and we're flirting with winter in the east. What happens in the middle where they meet? Well, a lot of the recent data is suggesting that we're likely going to see a big storm that spans from Mexico all the way up into Canada. This would likely bring heavy snow to Manitoba and strong winds, heavy rain, and storms way down to the south. Some data actually suggests that this is going to be a massive storm. With blizzard-like conditions in places like northern Minnesota and a giant squall line causing severe weather all across the eastern half of the U.S., this is certainly a possibility and it's not out of the ordinary for October. But it's too soon to say exactly how potent this storm's going to be. No matter what, this will certainly be a big rainmaker for somebody in the southeast as all that gulf moisture collides with the front, producing several rounds of thunderstorms. Notice how sporadic these areas of heavy precipitation are. The oranges and the reds represent places that can see more than two to three inches of rain. And once again, it's a little bit too far out to tell you exactly who's going to see what, but somebody's going to get a bad deal down here. I personally actually only ever get good deals because I use the heck out of today's sponsor. Deal Dash, the number one auction site on the World Wide Web. Deal Dash is an online auction house that's completely focused on getting you huge savings on all the best products. Because of their partnership with inventory liquidators, wholesalers, and brands themselves, all items on the site are brand new and shipping is always free. On Deal Dash, you can either choose to participate in an auction for an item or you can just buy it immediately with a buy now function. All auctions start at zero dollars and each new bid raises the price by one 
cents. In order to place your bid, you'll need to buy a bid pack through the DealDash website or the mobile app, available on both iOS and Android. The auction clock restarts from 10 seconds every time someone bids on the item. If no new bids are placed before the clock runs out, the last bidder wins. I'm actually gonna open the app right now. Look at all this stuff. This looks interesting, male fragrance. I'm just gonna sit here and place bids until I win. And if I don't wanna play this game, I can just buy it right now. It's that easy. Guys, Deal Dash has been around since 2009 and they've got over 20 million registered users. And today, Deal Dash is hooking up the Y'all Squad with 100 free bids with your first bid pack purchase. Just go ahead and click that link in the description and use my promo code Ryan Hall to take advantage of that. Once again, that's promo code Ryan Hall as soon as you click that link. Just enjoy those free bids, y'all. Okay, now let's get back into the video. Okay, so we got a big storm coming, lots of precipitation, lots of cold air. Where's the snow? There's actually gonna be a pretty good shot of seeing the white stuff in Minnesota and Wisconsin and up into the UP of Michigan Thursday evening into Friday morning, but it doesn't look like it's gonna to amount to much. This big cold sector of the low pressure system is going to make any precipitation that falls likely to be frozen. So flakes are possible from the Great Lakes region through New England all the way through the middle of next week, but it'll be intermittent. However, if this pattern continues and we keep getting these big blasts of cold air from Canada, one of them will catch up with a juiced up system from the Gulf of Mexico, and we may may actually have to worry about some legit October snow for somebody in the Northeast. Right now, it does look like some of the longer range models suggest that these colder bouts of air are gonna continue to try to settle in on the East Coast. I have seen this pattern countless times before, and this is exactly how we end up with an October surprise or some sort of early snowstorm somewhere on the East Coast. It just, it comes down to the ingredients and they're meeting up at the right time. And we just don't know for sure if that's gonna happen. The Gulf of Mexico is still hot and storms are still capable of forming and interacting with our transitional air masses as they become extra tropical. Some of the big forecast models that we put a lot of faith in are already suggesting something that looks similar to this, but there's nothing concrete. So the ingredients are coming into place for snow. We just don't know if it's actually gonna come to fruition. So as you can tell, I'm excited. I'm a big snow lover. Let me know how you feel about snow down below in the comments. But speaking of the Gulf of Mexico being hot, what's, what's going on with the tropics? Well, we have a new tropical storm down in the Caribbean. Tropical storm Julia is actually really close to where Ian was just two weeks ago in the Caribbean Sea. And it's a bit stronger than Ian was too, with maximum sustained winds already at 60 miles per hour. It seems like Julia is trying to live up to her brother's expectations, but thankfully she won't. She's gonna be taking a different path from her brother Ian. Julia is not expected to curve up towards the United States, but why is that? What's different here? Well, in the case of Ian, a trough over the US acted like a magnet and pulled Ian northward into the US. Yes. Now, while there is still a trough over the eastern U.S., there's a tail of high pressure from the Bermuda High that's wedging itself in between the trough and Julia. And since air moves away from these high pressure ridges, it will act as a barrier between the trough and Julia and it will keep it suppressed to the south. This doesn't mean Julia is not gonna create impacts, however. The National Hurricane Center forecasts it to intensify into a hurricane before landfalling in Nicaragua sometime Sunday. There's plenty of warm waters down there and there's gonna be decreasing wind shear, so it's not out of the question that Julia actually exceeds the forecasted peak before landfalling. This is still gonna be a big deal for Central America. In addition to storm surge and wind damage, it's forecast to stay over the region for about a day. And Central America is really mountainous, y'all. So unlike the flatlands along the Gulf Coast, Nicaragua has a lot of hills and mountains. And that spells disaster when you dump a ton of rain on it. Flash flooding and mudslides are gonna be the biggest issue that Central America has to face as the storm dumps all the ocean water it sucked up on its way in. So basically the rain's probably gonna be more life-threatening than the wind or the storm surge associated with Julia. And once Julia clears out of the Atlantic, it looks like there's not gonna be any other storms wanting to come out of the woodwork in the near future. Thankfully, nobody wants to follow in the footsteps of Hurricane Ian. It looks like that might be the peak of our season, hopefully. Models are showing very little to no signals of any other tropical development in the next two weeks, likely due to strong westerly wind shear residing over the main development development regions. It is only October though, and hurricane season lasts until November 30th. And even though there's a sharp decline in climatological name storms after mid-October, there's still a good chance for more storms to develop. And usually any storm that is going to develop in mid-October into November is gonna be in the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico. So we can't roll out US impacts. I do believe that our focus here on the channel is gonna shift away from the tropics and towards winter weather. But you know, if something happens in the tropics that needs to be covered, you're gonna 
hear it here first, so stay tuned. A super huge shout out to all of our members over here. Thanks to everybody who does anything to make this channel better, liking the videos, subscribing, becoming a member. You guys are awesome. Once again, I'm gonna have a full-fledged video about our Y'all Squad mission down there in Florida soon. There's a lot of stuff that goes on here, and I'm trying to manage it from a distance this time, so things are taking a little bit longer, but definitely look for that soon. I don't know if I'm gonna post it on this channel or the extra channel, but you'll see it. I promise you, it should be good, and it's all thanks to you. So thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.